guys, welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be doing the mid-year book free cut tag. Um, I actually can't remember if I did this last year or not, but I feel like so many people always do this tag. I think it's a really good way to evaluate how much you've been reading and like genuinely are you enjoying what you're reading this year and kind of take time to think are I reading books that actually bring me joy or am I just reading books for the sake of reading a book, you know what I mean? This year hasn't been going that great for my reading challenge. On Goreeds I set a challenge of 100 books. I'm currently like 13 books behind that. But you know, there's still the other half of the year to come. So there's still time to catch up with what I want to read. But today I'm just going to go through the books that I've read so far. And like my favourite, my least favourite and all that good stuff. So let's just get into the video. So the first question is, what is my favourite book in so far this year? And that would have to be a book that I listened to on audiobook quite recently, and that is The Midnight Library. This book, I saw it everywhere, like, before I even knew, like, about it at all. And I really wanted to read it. But I was, like, putting it off, putting it off, because I was like, oh, it's probably not going to be that great. It's overhyped. And then I read it, and I just fell in love. I was like, this is a book that I've, <laughs> I've wanted for so long that I never even knew that I wanted. Like, it was that good it was one of those books that you pick up and from the start to the finish you just want to keep reading like you don't want to put it down and it's not even like i don't want to put it down because it's so action filled or anything it's just the story is something i could never even imagine myself you know like something you never even thought about make a good book but it just makes a good book like one of those things that you read and it just takes you to a whole other world. I know what the Midnight Library is about. It follows this young girl called Nora who is kind of just like not happy in her life that she's currently living and she asks herself that question that we all end up asking ourselves sometimes and it's like like what would happen if I had lived other lives? Like what happened if I had chosen a different path? She has like all these different paths she could have chosen. Something meant she didn't pick that path and she went another way and basically she gets transported to this library where she meets her old librarian there it's kind of like a ghost i would say in there and she gets to see what it'd be like if she lived these other lives and she quickly comes to realize that it just isn't what it's all cracked cracked up to be and you'd never actually know what would happen for all those other lives and every life has a problem with it like nothing's perfect and that's what she quickly comes to realize it was just so good like i've never read a book i don't think i've ever read a book set in the library like fully set in the library and the idea of stories all being there it was just a 10 out of 10 read so the next question is what is the best sequel i've read this year honestly i feel like i haven't got around to really any sequels just because i find myself not really picking up sequels that often because i just don't find myself reaching for them and i find it easier just to read a standalone because once you've read the story you've enjoyed the story you haven't enjoyed the story it's over when i read a, like a series if i don't enjoy the first book i feel this like i need to eventually finish the series <laughs> and if i love the book then you have the next books which you may not like and often i tend to not like like as the series goes on i find a lot of times series get not worse but you just tend to enjoy them less and you're not as inclined to keep reading but you just keep reading because you feel like you're being forced to keep reading because there's, there's books left in the series but i did read one sequel i carried on the percy jackson series that i started at the end of 2020 so i read the sea of monsters and that's definitely been my favorite i also read the next one but i think it's the titan's curse but I did prefer the Sea of Monsters, but the Times Guys was still good. I feel like the Percy Jackson series is actually holding up to be pretty good. I haven't continued since then, but I will hopefully get around to it before the end of the year. But I always say these things and I never actually do it, but hopefully I will get around to it. One is what are the 2020 releases that I still want to read by the end of this year that I didn't get to read last year? And I have two for this one. One, I actually have the book with me and that is the cousins i have literally read all the other books in this series and i need to get around to this one because i have literally loved all the books that have been written by this author 
because I love a good mystery and I find often I don't really read YA mystery just because I don't know it tends to often feel like it's missing something but I love these ones and I feel I'm not good at guessing plot twists so I have no problem because I have seen people say that they guess like what happens but because I'm kind of slow and don't pick up on those plot twists I haven't noticed it but I enjoy them and I have no real problem with them and I can't wait to get to this one because it has been sitting on my shelf and I keep looking at it and I'm like I really want to get to that and I don't know why I haven't so I will get to it before the end of this year. The other one I want to get to is Clap When You Land. This book when it first came out I could not stop seeing it literally everywhere and I picked it up and I even started reading it and then I put it down again. I think it's because I was reading it as an ebook and sometimes when I read starring the ebook I start reading it and then I just never go back to it ever again and there's no reason I just find that's what I do a lot with ebooks so I will have to pick this one up physically I think or as an audiobook because I just wasn't reading it as an ebook I started it twice and it wasn't the book itself it was just the fact there was an ebook I don't know I can't explain why I can't just get to it but I will get to it eventually the next one is what are my anticipated reads that are yet to come out? I honestly never really look up new releases that often because I'm just still so overwhelmed by my TBR currently that I just tend to never look up what's coming up. So I do not know what I'm anticipating to read. I always just wait until I see other people posting about it, other people talking about it, and then I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds good. I'll read that. But I always just wait till they actually come out. Otherwise, I just get this overwhelming feeling of needing to read so many books from so many different like directions. The next one is what has been my biggest disappointment to read this year and I would have to sadly say I was disappointed by this book The Deathless Girls. It was one I picked up just because look at the cover like how can you say that isn't stunning. I picked up from the library didn't really read the blurb just went in knowing that I thought it'd be pretty good. I just didn't click with it. I think it maybe is because it's kind of like fantasy and I often don't really engage well with fantasy but there was just something missing for me and I kind of found myself often getting confused and a bit tangled up in the story. And the other one is one that I am so sad that I didn't love. I had it in my most anticipated releases of 2020 I think and, and that is the opposite of always. I wanted to love this book. I thought I was going to love this book. And I started out loving this book. But then it just came really repetitive. And I found the character of Jack just really, he got underneath my skin. I was just like, some of the decisions you're making are really baffling me. Like, why are you choosing to do this? I don't understand. But, oh, it was just, it follows this guy called Jack who meets this girl called Kate and he basically gets to relive his life again and again trying to save her life and first of all I think the repetitiveness kind of thrown off a little bit and kind of made me get bored quite quickly but I do think it was handled really well the repetitiveness because it kind of didn't always repeat the exact story again and again but just the character I just couldn't like him <laughs> I tried I just couldn't get my head around it next one is what was my biggest surprise of this year and I have to say Leaf Murder by Agatha Christie and um, I have been slowly working my th way through reading Agatha Christie's books and I tend to actually listen to my audiobook because the if you listen to BBC's audiobooks of them they are so good they're like full cast it is so immersive you have to listen to her books like that if you are going to read them because it's just amazing but this one is one of the Miss Marple ones I've been reading Hercule Poirot's ones so I switched over to uh, Miss Marple's and I was like thinking I wasn't really gonna like her books that much but then this one it just blew me away it was so good and so well developed like I loved the characters I felt connected to the characters the story the mystery mind blown so this may not come as any surprise since my last answer but the next question is my new favourite author and I have to say Agatha Christie because the more I read her the more I just love the way she writes mysteries like the plot is out of this world like, I don't know how she was able to come up with the plot 
and I, they make so much sense like I've not found a plot like a hole you know sometimes there's like holes a lot I feel like with some mysteries she doesn't have that she doesn't have that problem <laughs> they're just all so like I cannot see it coming and she'll always like use a small detail that you've probably forgot by the end she's like explaining how like the mystery happened you're like huh yeah that makes a lot of sense like that that makes sense but i just never thought of it so definitely she's my new favorite this one is favorite fictional crush honestly this year i haven't even read those books where i get people i'm like yeah but they have been one or two i have two first is ash from the midnight library honestly i think that was his name <laughs> but he was a really small character um he was just a guy that busy nora was within one of her like imaginations um and he's just so, so sweet like I, we didn't get that long with him but what we did get i was like he just seems like a really sweet guy who's just honestly just cares about his family like, honest what more could you really want you know and the other one i actually really liked was frank porter from since you've been gone that book i just felt like he helped out so much with the story and he was so sweet like i didn't expect him to be as sweet as he was but you know what he also just said it how it was and you gotta appreciate that sometimes and the next one is my new favorite character honestly i feel like any book i like the reason i often like it is because it has a strong character and i feel like i'm the person like the story could be rubbish but i could literally love one of the characters and be like this book is top tier. I I love this book. So my new favorite character has to be, strangely enough, another Agatha Christie related one, and that's Miss Marple. I think the reason that I love her so much is just because I didn't expect to. I was like going into Miss Marple. I was like, ah, oh, she's gonna be alright, but I'm not gonna be like, yay, Miss Marple. I'm not gonna come up being a Miss Marple fan. But I was wrong. I should not have thought so soon. I should have taken my time because now I just think. She's like so not what you expect to be the main kind of character to a mystery novel, but for some reason it works. She works as a main character and I cannot understand why, but she does. And plain and simple, she works and that's why she's so good. The next one was a really hard one actually for me to come up with an answer and that's a book that made you cry. I have not actually cried that book this year, which is kind of weird. Oh, what's wrong with me? I always cry. <laughs> And books is always something to make me cry. But I went with Flawed because I do actually remember having a few tears at this one. This basically follows these six kids that end up actually being in the lift together and they went to death and it brings them together. Like they didn't expect it to. They're not the normal people that would be put together, but it does bring them together. And I think the reason this one made me cry was because it was just there were some really emotional scenes. You got to see into all these people's lives and because it was like multiple perspectives you like got to get to know all the characters and when something bad happened you felt like you knew them and you felt really bad but like in a weird way reversing that it also was which made me laugh and this one did as well because it's one of those books like you know when you get in life there's happy moments and there's sad moments and this book really did show that and it made me laugh it made me cry and it had me feeling all emotions and it was a really good book and I feel like that's what makes a good book sometimes a book that makes you feel all the emotions you know because that's life there's good things and there's bad things and this really just showed that so it was a good book in that sense and um, another question is what's the most beautiful book I've acquired and I actually have no answer for this one because I this year haven't bought a single book I've either had it on only a book ebook or got them from the library so I actually haven't bought, bought any books this year which is kind of sad but also probably good for my bank balance you know so yeah I don't have an answer for this one but I was gonna say a beautiful book that I did get would be this one from the library which sadly didn't enjoy as much as the cover but it was like come on you can't no one can say this is the ugly cover it's beautiful and then the last question is what is a book I must get to before the end of the year? And there's just two series that I've been saying for literally the longest time that I'm going to finish. And for some reason, I haven't even got around to them. And that is finishing the Scythe series because why am I still not finished that? Even though I know I will love it, I just need to get to it. And also finishing the last book in Carver, which is Finale. 
which I love the first two books but for some reason just haven't continued the series and I feel like it's just all the time me procrastinating and it's the reason I haven't finished the series but I will I know but I keep telling myself you're gonna finish them you're gonna you have to finish them because you will enjoy them and the last one I actually want to get to is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee because I have picked this book up like four times at this point started reading it not even been not enjoying it just put it down because I'm like oh kind of like classics kind of heavy I oh, just want to read something else and then just don't go back to it which is kind of getting frustrating at this point I'm like Aisha get your ish together finish the book please <laughs> but yeah that is my mid-year book freak out tag I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did I'm going to give this video a thumbs up comment down your answers to any of these questions and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video bye